Today, I would like to explore a fascinating area of health and wellness science called the gut-brain axis. This is the term we use to describe the dynamic two-way communication between your digestive system and your brain. Understanding this connection not only changes how we think about digestion, but also how we approach mental health, mood, and even conditions like anxiety and depression. Today, I'll walk you through the following. What the gut-brain axis is and how it works. How disturbances in the gut influence psychiatric symptoms. How we can evaluate gut health with laboratory and functional testing. Evidence-based protocols and approaches for restoring gut function, including what's known as the 5 R's protocol. And finally, some general strategies you can adopt to support your gut, and therefore your mental health. Let's start with the basics. When we talk about the gut-brain axis, we're referring to a complex network of biochemical signaling that happens between your gastrointestinal tract and your central nervous system. This connection happens through several pathways. The vagus nerve, which is like a superhighway of information running from your brainstem directly into your gut. Immune signaling, since about 70% of your immune system is actually in your gut and hormonal and chemical messengers, including neurotransmitters. Remarkably, about 90% of your body's serotonin, often called the feel-good neurotransmitter, is produced in the gut. Your gut is also home to trillions of microorganisms, collectively known as the gut microbiota. These bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other microbes not only help you digest food, they also produce substances that can influence brain function. This means your gut doesn't just passively digest food. It actively communicates with your brain, shaping how you feel, how you think, and even how you respond to stress. So how does this actually show up in mental health? There's growing evidence that imbalances in gut microbiota, often called dysbiosis, are linked to conditions like depression, anxiety, and even cognitive decline. For example, certain bacteria produce short-chain fatty acids, like butyrate, which help maintain the integrity of the gut lining and reduce inflammation. If these bacteria are low, it can increase gut permeability, sometimes called leaky gut. This can allow inflammatory molecules to enter the bloodstream and reach the brain. Other bacteria influence GABA or gamma aminobutyric acid, a neurotransmitter that calms the nervous system. Changes here can tilt us toward anxiety. Elevated systemic inflammation often driven by gut issues, has been shown to reduce serotonin availability and disrupt dopamine pathways, both critical for mood regulation. We also see that many people with irritable bowel syndrome or IBS or inflammatory bowel conditions report high rates of anxiety and depression. It's a bi-directional problem. Stress can worsen gut function, and gut dysfunction can worsen stress reactivity. Given all this, how can we actually assess gut health in someone who's struggling with mood or cognitive issues? Through the lens of integrative and functional medicine, we often look at the following. Comprehensive stool tests, which analyze the microbiome balance, check for infections or parasites, measures inflammation markers like calprotectin, and evaluates digestive function. Zonulin or intestinal permeability markers, which helps to assess whether the gut lining is compromised. Food sensitivity panels, though these are somewhat controversial and need careful interpretation. Markers of systemic inflammation, like the high-sensitivity C-reactive protein, or HSCRP, 
or indirect markers like homocysteine or neutrophil lymphocyte ratio. And sometimes organic acid testing, which can give helpful insight into bacterial overgrowth and nutrient metabolism. By looking at these, we can build a more complete picture of how the gut might be influencing mental health. So if there is a problem, what can we do about it? In clinical practice, we often use a framework called the five R's. The first R is remove. This means eliminating factors that irritate the gut. That could be certain foods, chronic NSAID use, or treating infections like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO, or parasites. The second R is replace. And this involves supporting digestion with things like digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid if indicated, or bile support. The third R is re-inoculation. This involves restoring beneficial bacteria through probiotics and prebiotics. This helps reestablish a healthy microbiome. The fourth R is repair, and this involves using nutrients that help heal the gut lining, such as glutamine, zinc, omega-3 fatty acids, or herbal compounds like DGL. The fifth R is rebalance. This is the lifestyle piece, managing stress, improving sleep, exercising moderately, and maintaining a balanced daily rhythm, all of which are critical for gut health and for regulating the gut-brain axis. Even without extensive lab work, there's a lot you can do to support the gut and brain. Eat more fiber-rich whole foods, which feed beneficial gut bacteria. Leave four to five hours between meals to allow the migratory motor complex, the sweeping mechanism of the gut, to move particles along so bacteria are less likely to build up and become imbalanced in one area. Include fermented foods like yogurt, kefir, kimchi, and sauerkraut. Reduce processed foods and excessive sugar, which can fuel dysbiosis. Stay hydrated. Your gut lining needs water to maintain its barrier function. Manage stress through practices like mindfulness, yoga, or simple deep breathing techniques, which stimulate the vagus nerve. And of course, get enough sleep, which is deeply entwined with gut health and inflammation. To wrap up, the gut-brain axis isn't just a catchy concept. It's a profound reminder that we are whole systems. Your mind and your digestive tract are in constant dialogue. By taking care of your gut, you're also taking care of your brain, and vice versa. If you're struggling with persistent mood issues, digestive problems, or both, it might be worth exploring this connection more deeply with a practitioner who understands integrative approaches. I hope this gives you a new appreciation for how powerfully your gut and brain are linked and how you can start supporting both. If you enjoyed this talk and would like to see more similar content, please like and subscribe. In the description below, you'll find more helpful information, including a link to my blog, where I discuss this content in a little more detail. Thank you for watching.